Hello T-Rexers! Welcome back to the shop. Nothing like a Scout Crafter Challenge to get you back out working in the shop. It is a little brisk here. Uh, 17 when I checked it on the way out, so if you're whining about 30, good luck with that. So, I've got a couple of different things that I want to show you for my idea for a tool tote and some of the things I don't like about other tool totes. So let me bring you in and, and we'll go from there. Alright, first let's talk about this, this thing right here. This is a tool tote that is clearly from another era. I don't know who built it. I know that it wasn't built by anyone in my family. So um, clearly there's a there's a problem with how deep this is for someone I don't know, I didn't think I had small hands, but okay. The inside of this measures 31 and a half inches, and the outside overall is 32 and 3 quarters. So that is clearly meant to hold some saws. You guys can see the saw curves in there. So somebody had four saws in there, or curves for four saws. So that's cool for what it is. It's not made out of anything extraordinary. The sides and ends are plywood. This is just a pine 1x4. So that's quite a tote. When we go to do stuff in the 21st century with that, take our cordless saw and that fits. So that's not that just doesn't fit today. There's nothing wrong with it, but I, I'm i not the handsaw type. Let's just go there. So, we can move that one out of the way because that's not going to work for us. Let's come down here into the foreground and talk about this little guy. This little guy is cool in that he's got a lot of features. Um, I actually built this one a long time ago. We're going to do some other stuff with this. It's got little separators you can put little pieces of plywood and separate your stuff and that's cool all in itself but these center handled tool totes have a drawback to me so when I go on to go fix something I usually take my supplies I put them all in one side to get that loaded right up and then I like to take the tools and I put them in the other side got them all loaded up but when I pick that up um, she she kind of needs some ballast on the other side so I realized that was a bit extreme and maybe I could put that over there but it won't work for my example so it leans really bad so I do think that there is a solution to the problem that is older than you may think it actually is a New England thing and I'm sure they did this in other parts of the country but where I saw it was actually a New England clam diggers basket so we're gonna take some scrap and we are going to fashion ourselves a basket so with no further ado let's get on with it hang on I've got something all right, so it's right here from the beginning that we need to make a change. So my board is 18 inches long, seven and an eighth wide. So I marked out center and I want my handle to be about two inches wide. So seven minus four, two inches on each side, that would be three and a sixteenth. The closest I have is a hole saw that is three and five eighths. So this will become as clear as mud here in just a minute. Uh, I can't go a whole lot bigger than that. That is a, I don't know what that is. That's a big one. That's a four and a half. And if I do that, I won't have enough handle here left to really support what I'm doing. So I'm gonna drill that hole. All right, just like that, there's a hole. So. I'm going to go from one side of the board to the bottom of the hole 
out to the edge to go from the other side of the board to the hole. Okay, I'm actually going to cut that on here. I mean, I'm sure there's some other ways to screw that up, but this is surely the fastest. So that's what that looks like. And I'm sure you guys are thinking T-Rex. I think the cold has gotten to you. But before you go there, we are actually going to stand them up opposites. Probably ought to make that so you can see what I'm talking about. We are going to make those stand up opposites and with a diagonal handle you can actually get to stuff that's in here. So these little ears are going to get cut off. I'll do that right now and then we'll get to making the box. All right fellas, so we got her pretty well wrapped up. I'm going to run off some of these corners here with a rasp. Probably should go the other way around. And as you can see, we got that cross piece handle. Get rid of any I'm going to use it. We got that crossways handle. So when you put weight, even if you're putting it all in one side, the balance on these is a lot better. So could go from the back. So, this isn't actually a fluke. So I actually make these a different design obviously. Those are garden baskets and the thing that I like about tools is every industry has special stuff that's just for them and our job as craftsmen isn't, isn't just to fix these tools but find new uses for things for industries that have gone by that are already past their prime. I did staple this together. I tried to glue and staple it, but I didn't know that glue froze at 17 degrees. Who oh, no. knew? So, like the old horse files, use these for horse hooves. They are great rasp for woodworking, fine one, the medium one, those need to get de-rusted. My 18 inch rigid needs re de -rusted. So, a little more about this design. So when you're getting into different size, funny size tools, this will get in here. Where if you try the same thing on a, on a regular tote, not going to go if that was across the center. Um, so that's the reason I did the other tote like that. You can carry small pumpkins in that one, small watermelons and all sized fruit. So I really like the offset handle. The offset handle is actually, um, I saw it originally on a clam digger's basket. Uh, I saw the picture was on the Long Island shore in uh, between New York and Connecticut. So this is what they used to use. Well, more precisely, let me get one of the big ones. More precisely, the, the basket I saw was very similar to this. Um, it's got the kind of reverse gambrel there. And you would walk around out in the muck. That's why it's got to be good balance is because um, without it, you're just going to fall over because you're tromping around and need to muck harvesting clams. At the end of the day, when you come back to the house, you tip it on its side and you spray it out with a hose to clean off all the clams and let it sit for a minute and you carry it inside. These baskets are great for multiple reasons aside from the simple. Uh, if you make a basket where the side, where the handle folds to the side, then you can't stack them. But this style basket, because of how they're built, you can stack them. I have pictures of picking apples with these in there. I had four or five of them. My wife can't get enough of these things. She's always confiscating new ones uh, for more purposes. So my onions and potatoes are in these in the house. Um, 
like I said, we sell them over on the Mefford Endeavors website. So that's it. That's my entry into the Scout Crafter Tool Tote Challenge. That's the history behind it. Sorry about the clutter in the shop. All of this over here are clothespins. Behind you, clothespins. Over by the planer, clothespins. All the equipment is set up to make clothespins. So that's what's going on right now. It's a, a smite brisk. So I'm going to head on in the house. So some of you guys might have noticed that I missed the last, I don't know, a couple of challenges. But anyway, this is one reason. That's my birdhouse challenge. And I might have gotten the scope of the concept a little wrong. That's actually my prototype. That's my birdhouse. Uh, between the two, right around 100 birds. So, that'll keep you out of trouble. Can you hear him? Not really excited about coming outside when it's this cold. So, it's all good. All right guys, so you can clearly tell we're not in the shop anymore. But I want to put some transfers on the end of my new tool tote. So these are uh, laser jet transfers. What, you have to have a laser printer. There's a different way for an inkjet, but I don't have an inkjet, so I use a laser printer. So um, you have to print it in reverse. So when you look at it from the back, you have to be able to see what it's supposed to stay clearly through it. So everything printed in reverse. This is what we're going to kind of end up with. And you take your your words, your whatever you're going to put on it, and tape it face down. Make sure those don't do anything funny. Uh, get the missus's iron out. You're not going to want it all the way high on cotton because that'll actually burn the wood. Ask me how I know. And so I'm still at it. The, uh, the big iron turned out to be not the right tool for the job. The transfer on the other end, this is the tool I used. Um, and I have done it with the big iron before, but I didn't actually sand this because it's really cold outside. So without the sanding the surface smooth, you need a a smaller iron that you can really get in and my heat was not right so this one just seems to be all right and for those wondering where you pick one of these up I actually don't know but I know what it is this is a little iron that was made for pressing the seams when you're making quilts so in between the little blocks that you use when you're sewing a quilt together this would be the tool. It's just a nice, smooth, small iron. They do sell a circular bit that goes on, um, that goes on like a soldering iron, but I don't know if that would be too hot. Uh, if you have an adjustable one, that would probably be great, but this by itself didn't burn the paper, but when I used the, but when I used the, uh, the big iron, it did burn the, ta the paper. Um, I couldn't seem to get it at the right temperature to, to do anything. So I've already done the, the logo for the other channel, working on the T-Rex logo, and I will keep on going and bring you back when I'm done. All right, one more thing. These tool totes I made some time ago. There is a YouTuber called uh, John Hines. And I think it's, I build it CA is his, uh, his channel. And he made a set of these and I figured out by watching a video how to make my own. I think he sells plans to them. So 
this is actually two U-shaped boxes held together by the two ends with the handle stuck in the middle. And that leaves you with this empty cavity on the bottom so you can stack them. So they are three identical caddies. Uh, the, the things I don't like about this is I can't grab them and have all three. Um, so I think I'm going to put a window hasp. I know I have some, I just couldn't find them. Uh, this was actually what I was going to do for my project, but I never got enough warm weather to do it. So these are my three. I usually keep electrical stuff in one, plumbing stuff in another, and just random hand tools in a third um, for household repairs. It's not really a jobber size, it's kind of a honeydew size. So that is what I use. Or what I what I made to use, and like I said, they have these nice little separations, so you can make different size compartments. Um, I like them. I've had them for several years. I made a different style of the same thing, and it, it holds one gallon jars for storage. So that's it for me. T Rex out.